yeah, without further ado, good to have everyone. And Thomas, I'll let you introduce yourself. Thanks, Julian. Um, so yeah, my name is Thomas. Um, I'm the head of content at Get Accept, which is a um, Swedish-based uh, company uh, with headquarters in Malmö. Myself, I'm based in Stockholm. And yeah, very quickly about Get Accept, we are a digital sales room provider. So kind of transforming the buyer seller experience. Um, and myself, I've been at Get Accept for a year and a half. I am originally from France, but spent a, all my teenage years in the US. And I've now been in Sweden for almost 13 years. So looking forward to my 14th winter here coming soon. That's a lot of winters up north. It is. And you have no idea how many, you know, winter is coming type of jokes you get in Sweden <laughs> every time you're like at this time of the year. Oh, I feel like this in Germany already. I'm ty I'm terrified of winter being inside with, with the kids. Yeah. Oh, we'll figure it out. Uh, so Thomas, maybe a starting question. Uh, it, and we'll do an easy one to start with. Uh, tell us about your, what is your team routine like um, for, for a hybrid team? So you say so you have two uh, local and two remote team members, right? Exactly. Um, so I have- What does your routine uh, look like? Yeah. So yeah, just context. I have four members in my team, one of which also uh, is in this session. So then you can be, uh, you know, rest assured that everything I say is actually be true because otherwise you know i will hear from her tomorrow um but so i have two team members based in stockholm with me i have one team member in malmo which is about 700 kilometers south of stockholm and then another one in marseille in the south of france so routines that we have um just from a company perspective we have a company kickoff every monday morning at 8 30 so we also do breakfast um, meeting in the Stockholm office. So that's one way, even though it's not team specific, but that's how we kick it off. Then we have a marketing team meeting on Monday afternoon. So content is part of the marketing team. Then specific to the marketing team, it's actually not that much. We do a content meeting, uh, team meeting on Tuesdays. It used to be on Monday, but we felt it was too many kind of kickoff meetings already with the marketing and company one. And then I do one-on-one -on -one meetings with every single member in the beginning when they start uh, every week. And then after a while, when they're at their six-month period, then we usually switch to every other week. Um, so these are kind of the two set um, meetings that we have. Then we have tried a few other things which uh, we need to kind of kick off again but for example we've done virtual cooking once in I think in May or April so like at 5 or 5 30 p.m we had the whole team meet and actually Emake was leading uh, kind of teaching us a recipe so we were cooking together and then sitting each in our home homes eating the dinner and just chatting but we've done a lot of team games as well as the, with the rest of the marketing uh, team so um, yeah, these are kind of the set things. <laughs> then when it comes to communication, um, we use Slack as our main communication channel. Then we have uh, Zoom or some people do Slack calls or Google Hangouts. And then Trello is more like our project management board. So we keep track on what we're supposed to do. So for the meetings that you guys do, what's the are you are you doing them all remotely or are some of you in the office and some of you are um, and you kind of group together yeah when we, when we have uh, i mean for in the office we have a also a hybrid company policy so we are supposed to be three times a week in the office so we don't have to be every day in the office either so we try to coordinate that we at least spend one day a week uh, together in the office we have this kind of sign up sheet for the whole Stockholm office also with the other people that are not in the content team um, but we try to do at least Monday mornings uh, since we have the kickoff with the breakfast it's kind of nice you start the week just chatting with each other and then yeah for example Emma and myself when we do one-on-ones then we try to be in the office both of us we do it uh, face to face mm -hmm. rather than via zoom hmm. 
To, and the big question is, how do you make sure that the people who get who don't get FaceTime with you uh, feel? I don't want to say the same. I don't know if it's possible, but how do you make sure they don't feel left out from the in office team? It's not easy because it's almost um, like there is you know three different levels because so I have two members in the office with me, so we meet quite regularly face to face. Then I have one team member in uh, Magno. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, right now we're trying to not travel so much, but generally I would go to Manu every, if not every, maybe every other month. Uh, or he started in June, like when he got onboarded, I brought him up to Stockholm as well for a few days. So there would be some kind of, you know, face-to-face -face interaction, if not on a daily basis, then at least once a month or once every other month. I think with my uh, team member in Marseille, it's a bit harder in my one year, yeah, one and a half years in, in the company, I've been once there to Marseille uh, to meet her and the rest of the team. So, but we do have company kickoffs usually once per quarter. Um, sometimes we do them face to face. So then the whole company meets up. So we had one um, in June and then we had one in March where we all went to Switzerland for like a skiing trip. So usually, we will still meet face to face once per quarter, uh, but it is obviously hard. So from a virtual perspective, then you need to make sure that you put more effort into those that are in remote locations. How do other teams do it in your company? Do you know? Uh, I think it's very different per team. And then there's also different, I mean, it's, it's a bit like a matrix system, right? Because so my colleague in Marseille, she is also uh, in the office, in the Marseille office, there are about 10 people. So she's not by herself either. So she has her own, her own kind of camaraderie group with her um, peers in Marseille. Then we have people, especially in the US, but some even in Europe, like we have a product market here in the Netherlands, for example, that are fully remote. So we don't have any local offices in that region. So they they are on a completely different level because for them, they meet colleagues really, you know, once per quarter at most. So for example, we have um, a group of people from Sweden going to inbound in Boston, uh, which is actually starting tomorrow. And they're spending a, like a week and a half there because then, you know, they're making sure to bring the whole US team together. So they have face to face time with them. So there's always opportunities when it's kickoffs or conferences or these kind of things, then they try to maximize that time. By the way, you're not going to to inbound. Well, no, didn't take you? I, I had to do this uh, remote manager circle. So I said, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of uh, sacrifice. Appreciate that. <laughs> By the way, for those of you who joined late, if you have questions, uh, I don't want to just do this. Uh, it doesn't have to be a one-on-one -on -one between me and Thomas. Uh, if you have questions, uh, drop them in the chat or raise your hand. You can also just unmute yourself, throw in a question. We're not that many, so it should work out. But yeah, a question. I mean, I can ask the audience as well. And if you guys want to answer in chat or, or take the um time but um, I wonder how many of you being in hybrid or remote teams do you have different types of routines other than one team meeting per week and maybe one-on-ones with your team members or your team manager if anyone else is doing it differently I would love to hear different ideas or perspectives as well can also share what we do. We're mostly remote, Thomas, but uh, we, some of us are in Stuttgart in the, the south of Germany, and we come together uh, twice a year for um, what we call pop-up office. So Tizé here, um, where are you, Tizé? <laughs> um, Tizé will organize uh, a pretty significant company get-together. We're just 20 people, but it feels like a huge effort. And I think it, it's probably, um, yeah, a, a lot of effort. It's not super cheap, but we invest in it because every time we do it, we notice that we just get a lot done. We have a lot of good ideas. It's really important for us to connect and remember what it's like being together as a team. So we do that. And as a marketing team, we come together kind of like you, Thomas. So every quarter we try to 
come together to the same place. And what we try to do is not just co-work, but then pick, pick some kind of topic for all of us or two topics, and then really uh, do a kind of a sprint where we, we set a goal in the beginning of the week and we use the, the good communication that we have and the time of being together. And we try to knock something out and get something done in that time. So for example, one at the very beginning, we wanted to set up a process for creating content and hire writers and put together guidelines and try writing the first posts and do keyword research and have a content plan for the next three months. So uh, that was nice. Yeah. Another thing maybe I can add also is we have a, a tool that we use within the the whole organization actually called winning temp which is uh, a tool that measures uh, employee kind of people temperature so it's a weekly survey that everyone answers and then you can see you don't see individual answers but then it's broken down in i think nine or ten different sectors so it tells you uh, it gives you a score for how your team members are, or the team is doing in terms of team spirits, leadership, personal de development, work situation, these kind of things. So then every manager can see for their own team kind of trend over time as well. So we also bring it up sometimes in team meetings. If we see, you know, personal, for example, last week, I think uh, personal development was on a trend going down. So then, you know, we had a discussion about it in the team. What can we do? You know, it's, you know, both from my perspective, but also from your individual perspectives to improve that, you know, find courses you want to do, what do you want to learn about, what internal resources can you use, these kind of things. But it's good also to, because it's also very hard as a manager when you're dealing with someone who's remote, you know, other than reading Slack messages and having Zoom calls once in a while, it's really hard to gouge the mood of the person if you don't really see them face to face. I mean, I can read him okay quite well because now we work in the office, you know, uh, quite a lot. So I can see when she's entering the office, you know, if she's in a great mood or in not so great mood and I'm sure same thing for her. But so, yeah, that's easy. But with somebody who's remote, obviously, it's very hard to kind of uh, read the person's mood. So that tool helps quite a lot, not to be too obsessed with stats, but to see more of the trends over time. Uh, sounds interesting. Is there, have you tried any other tools before like Office Vibe or Culture Amp or anything like that? No, nah, that's, that's just a tool we have uh, for the whole company. So it's, it comes from the people and culture team. We, we have another tool called Hi Bob, but that's more, uh, yeah, to give like personal kudos and celebrate birthdays, announce when people are departing the organization, these kind of things. So, but we don't, uh, yeah, don't really use it that much, to be honest. Interesting. Uh, by the way, um, we will put all these these tools and uh, recommendations from Thomas in a notes a notes document afterwards. So we'll send this out. There's also recommendations from the last session that you can check out. Uh, so Thomas, question I have is, um, so the the games and the virtual cooking and the tools, uh, the quarterly get togethers, uh, who organizes that? And like, where does the, where does the budget come from? Does that come from your team budget? Does that come from like an HR bucket that you can draw from or how does that work? So it depends on what level. Uh, I mean, we have, you know, other things that I didn't mention. So, for example, we do from a company level wise, usually we do monthly activities that is organized by people and culture. So then, for example, this month we're doing a chess tournament. And so people and culture is organizing it. It's, you know, free to take part of and that's also another way to not only interact with your own team members but more from you know other teams of people that you wouldn't necessarily collaborate with from a work perspective and um, then there's always virtual coffees and kickoffs and 
There is also a mentor program that's uh, run twice a year, I think for six months. So you can either join as a mentee or as a mentor. So that's more like a one-on-one -on -one type of relationship building as well. Uh, but you can, if you're a mentee, you can ask for a specific mentor as well. So if you know somebody in the organization that's well-versed into a specific area and you want to learn more about that or develop, then you can ask for that specific person. Um, but yeah, it depends on when it's company-wide activities, then it comes from the people and culture budget. Uh, when it's kind of more within marketing or within content, I would say there's no budget, unfortunately. So when we did the, um, the virtual cooking, I mean, you know, I people cook generally. So it's more that, you know, you buy specific ingredients recommended in advance and we cook together. But there was... Um, I don't think there is, I mean, sometimes we do things in the office after work, these kind of things, then yeah, we'll have uh, some kind of budget for drinks and snacks and these kind of things. But yeah, mm -hmm. but there is no allocated budget of you can spend X amount per month or per quarter on team building or these kind of things. Interesting. Thanks for sharing. That's really interesting. Uh, I. I didn't know there was something like I've heard of uh, like well-being um, roles before, but not of culture roles. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, we, we have like well-being. I think everyone can spend an X amount of uh, sum for like, yeah, health or well-being like uh, gym or this kind of thing. I can't remember the amount. I think it's probably around 25 euros per month. Uh, we do have a company subscription to this um app called if i remember correctly it's called blue call so everyone can use it as well it's kind of this uh, access to this uh, online therapist so it's an app you can log in and if you you know feel down or whatever you can speak to i think you have x amount of sessions to do for free per month or per quarter i can't remember exactly uh, but yeah Damn. so so we do have a lot of you know support in the sense that we have different things we can do uh, some are more company wide. If it's more team developed, then usually it's more, uh, yeah, kind of uh, more low key or less investment uh, from a financial perspective. Hmm. To kind of go back to something that you said in the very beginnings that you're you're four people now. Um, when you first joined, was your team smaller? Did was there any kind of development in? your teams how your team size changed and how that changed the dynamics of connecting with each other yeah when i started i mean the team didn't exist um, so it was a newly created team and position so then i had one person uh, that joined my team that had been in a company for a while and then i hired um, everyone else hmm. I'm also asking because I'm going to call him out because, but uh, one person here, Alex, uh, has um, one direct report. So, uh, and uh, Asi Gomada, we're three in the marketing team. So, Elena, Lea, and myself. And uh, whenever one person is on vacation, I think the one on one dynamic is quite different than the, the uh, one, the four to, you, you know what I'm saying? The, the larger team makes it a little easier to stay connected. Whereas yeah. if you have just, yeah, one person on there. Yeah, and I mean, we, we did have that because we had, uh, so actually right before Imake joined the company in November, uh, so between September and November, I had just one direct report because we were, so right now today we're five in the team in total, but then last August, I had one team member, the one in Marseille, who went for a six-month study program. So then she wasn't working between August and December. And then I had the team member that was already in the company before I started. Uh, she was the only one in my team because then another guy had quit. And then Imake started in yeah November, if I remember correctly. So yeah, for like a two-month period, I had just one direct report actively working, which was very different to today when I have four direct reports, then it's, yeah, very different dynamics. I feel like we need to hear from Maka and get her, her side of the story. I don't know if she is, if she's able to chat right now. I think she was walking earlier, but uh, Maka, if you are, I'd be curious to hear like from your perspective, what's worked well 
in terms of keeping keeping the hybrid team connected with the two uh, two different locations being remote and local. I'm still walking, but <laughs> yeah. I guess. See, she is remote as well. <laughs> I'm very remote. Um, no, it's just a mobile version for this platform. Um, well, I mean, I think what Thomas said, it was pretty challenging to keep people together. And also, I think it's often, or everyone tends to talk about the manager's responsibilities for like, keeping people together and sort of just activating them. But I think this goes both ways. So like the employee or the team members also need to social media to, to engage uh, in the activities suggested, or even I think there is a bit of a responsibility to pitch in, even in just coming up with ideas like, hey, I have this great idea, this is what we can do as a team. Like I understand you probably need to be more on the extroverted side to do that, but um, I think, especially when you're such a small team, it's kind of nice to divide these type of tasks. Yeah, that's an interesting perspective. I didn't hadn't thought about that before. Yeah, so for example, to Emma's point, the whole uh, virtual cooking was her idea and she hosted it. So she kind of led the whole program. But I think yeah trying to create an environment where everyone feels comfortable to pitch in because if it's only coming from me all the time then it's very one-sided as well so it's not a great dynamic either i could be speaking to five people or one or to a mirror it would be the same thing pretty much so yeah ah thomas wants to cook again <laughs> i do <laughs> uh yeah it's also something that Darcy said last time. She was she was here last week, and I asked this question: like, whose responsibility? Whose responsibility is it to create this remote work experience and to to work on culture? And she said something similar: like culture is co-created, which I think I I still I still grab, uh, struggle with the implementation. Like, okay, how do you do that? You can't like force to co-create culture, force everyone to, okay, now go co-create co culture now. Uh, Cause it's a little ambiguous, but she also said that it's the, all the parts coming together that create culture um, and everyone contributes in, in a way you can't make it like a top down. Okay. now this is, this is our culture and this is how we're going to, um, you know, be connected and it's if it's one side it's also very exhausting for the for the manager yeah and you can also um i mean you know culture and and these kind of connections within the team they evolve all the time because i mean you know people leave or they move to different positions or these kind of things so uh, i would say depending on the size of your company as well i mean in get except we're about 200 there's always other people you can involve. Um, so when we did the virtual cooking, we had one colleague who is running her own team, but she was actually the only team member in that team at that time. So then we also invited her to the virtual cooking. Um, sometimes in our team meetings, we also invite another person. So we're, head, we're the content team, but from a marketing perspective, so customer facing, there is a um, UX content person. So she's more internally in app in charge of the content, but it's still somewhat similar positions when it comes to you know copywriting and these kind of things. So we started involving her a lot more with what we do and inviting her at least once a month to our content meetings. So then she feels a bit more involved outside of her own kind of UX team. And we also feel more involved outside of just the marketing team. And it just, you know, it's more fun if you're six than if you're five, just like it's more fun if you're, you know, two than just alone. So yeah. You can always find people somewhere else to create different dynamics as well. Yeah, yeah. I'll give a, our non-existent Gomada feature a shout out. So uh, something we thought about before because we've heard it from other people is uh, finding a way to spontaneously connect different teams, kind of like you're explaining, because it's very hard. I feel like in, 
it's almost a bigger challenge to to meet other people in the company than it is to stay connected within your own team, which is something we've heard from other people, but that's just a, a random side note. Um, one thing that we talked about last a few weeks ago, Thomas, when we first uh, talked about doing this is uh, hiring, which I had, hadn't considered before that that's a whole different challenge for hybrid teams. So curious to hear your take. How do you think about hiring? Do you, do you just yeah. whoever's best or do you have a strategy for? I mean, it's, hire from? obviously, you know, the ultimate goal is to find the person who is, I wouldn't say who's the best, but is the best fit because that can include different criteria based on, on what you're searching. Uh, but yeah, I think the whole hybrid remote aspect also comes into consideration when you're recruiting. I know that when we recruited for Imakis position, for example, in November, I was looking for someone that was specifically based in a Stockholm office. Um, and also because at that time I had just come out of this two month period where I had just one team member and she was based in Malmö and it's yeah it's nice to have someone to to you know that you can have more kind of conversations without being too formal or like oh we need to set up a meeting and have a zoom call and these kind of things um so that that comes into play as well but then I mean, I haven't gotten to that point yet, but then, uh, you know, then you also, I guess, want to keep a balance because right now, so I have four team members to our in Stockholm to our remote. I guess if my boss tomorrow said recruit 10 more, you know, content marketeers, I probably would not recruit 10 more people based in Stockholm because then that would make such a big off balance for the two that are remote who would feel maybe even more kind of alienated that, you know, the manager and these 10 people are in the same office and we're like remotes, but same with the, with the reverse as well. I wouldn't hire 10 people that are remote because then it creates another off balance in the more remote sense. Um, so trying to, yeah, find a balance between, yeah, so it's truly hybrid. Some people are, you know, in the same office and some people are remote, but there is a good balance uh, on each side. I mean, then you have some key, some companies where everyone's remote, so that doesn't even come into play. Or some companies who only want to recruit where you have offices because maybe they, you know, they don't have, you know, setups with, you know, being able to pay people in other countries or these kind of things. Um, but yeah. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. And uh, I'm just seeing we're right around 30 minutes now. And I, I promise we keep this to half an hour about learning about remote teams. Uh, but we can stick around longer if anyone has questions uh, for Thomas or if you have questions for the group, Thomas. Yeah, again, same thing. I don't know how many people here are in fully remote or is anyone else also in this kind of hybrid setup where some team members are in office and some people are remote? Yeah, for us, it's the same, <clears throat> mostly hybrid. Um, so I, I do have this, this one direct report who just started a couple of months ago. She is, she works remotely while the rest of our let's call it growth marketing team is here in uh, Munich locally. And that is not, not ideal. I have to say, you know, to have some only one person remote in the, in a smaller team. Um, so yeah, actually also interesting food for thought. Uh, if I now were thinking about a second hire, if I would now consciously also have this person, you know, maybe not based in uh, Munich too, just so there is some balance in there. I did not think about that yet. Yeah, it's interesting to at least think about because obviously I don't think it was ever, you know, a thought within recruitment before, but now that, you know, how we work and stuff has changed, it's interesting, you know, the new kind of challenges you can have and stuff in recruitment.
All right. All right. Um, one last question I have, I know a few people already dropped off, but, um, if we were to, oh, Tizzy, you've got a question. Tizzy, I'll, I'll, we'll do your question in a second. Okay. <laughs> um, but if we were to do a, a f continuing conversation, like an ask me anything with Thomas or connecting a few of you hybrid, uh, team leaders, um, in some kind of group after this, I'm curious where you would, uh, want to do this so we thought it things we thought about is um creating a little slack community where we can talk over slack we've thought about facebook groups but we're not sure how many people still using facebook groups or have a facebook profile or want to use their personal profile for connecting um the third idea was um, having a linkedin group we're not sure if those um, are getting used so uh, if you have a strong opinion of uh, if you want to connect with other people who are in this um, and the people from before, um, <laughs> all right, Jesse Slack. Um, yeah. If you, if you have any strong opinions of where you would want to do it, I'd be curious because in the end we want to make it useful for you. Right. Two votes for Slack. <laughs> uh, in the meantime, also Slack, uh, Slack Tizzy, you want to, you want to, um, unmute and ask your question. Yep. Yep. Uh Definitely, I can. Sorry, just just putting asking them quickly. But I have I had some question, but like kind of your people and culture department, how it works. Uh, it's more about like, do they give guidelines generally speaking to managers, like on recruitment, how to deal with your rem remote or hybrid team? And it was also very interesting in like kind of perks and benefits. If there was any difference between a a remote team member or a hybrid team member and really people coming to the office daily is like well, what are the difference in the culture between uh, someone on online and someone on site yeah yeah good questions i i will try to find it but i read a super interesting article about this and i think there was a forum discussion based on this um but basically the article was saying that the way that we talk about culture um, is changing quite a lot because before culture was really linked to the physical location of the office, right? It was like, you know, you know, after works and ping pong tables and these kind of things, which today is completely irrelevant if you're remote or hybrid or these kind of things. So culture is more about you know, the dynamics within the organization rather than linked to actual, you know, physical perks and benefits uh, due to the location of the office, which you can even see, you know, in, in ads, how they're written, they're trying to kind of change that aspect. Like if you're based in, you know, Hamburg, you would get this, or if you're based in Stockholm, you get that. But uh, within GetAccept, we don't really have i mean we have i think the same kind of perks and benefits they're very general like you know health care like health benefits i mean doesn't matter where you're based you will have 25 euros or 250 kroners a month to spend on a gym membership or these kind of things um i'm sure then you know obviously if you're in the manmo office we just moved into this huge nice office everyone wants to work there because it's really cool but not everyone has access to that. So I'm not I'm not sure that there is, at least we haven't figured out creating perks and benefits for uh, office employees and then for remote employees, at least to my knowledge. And I'm not sure that there is that many examples of companies who have uh, yet. But I know, I think it was Drift, for example, the CEO said that, you know, they were moving, removing completely remote exactly because of that. They felt that office employees would get too many advantage, especially when it comes to promotion and this kind of thing, because you're building physical relationships or like face-to-face -face relationships with colleagues and managers as opposed to remote employees who don't have that advantage. So one of the reasons they decided to go fully remote is to create more parity between everyone in the company instead of having these kind of two groups one more advanced because they can build these kind of relationships so yeah couldn't agree with that more actually it was very much the same at my last company because we were also hybrid and me going to the office i was 
the CEO was there every day, COO was there. So we were small companies. So you would see each other every day and talk about work and talk about ideas, an opportunity that remote people wouldn't get. They wouldn't just randomly drop by the CEO's Slack and share their ideas with them. So yeah, it's really, yeah. it's an interesting move. Awesome, awesome. All right, so uh, we'll cut things here. Uh, thank you everyone for joining. Um, we'll upload this to YouTube. We'll share all the notes and all the uh, recommendations. Uh, we'll, Thomas will have to find the article and share it with me and we'll put it in the notes. Uh, thanks everyone for joining.